Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice number theory problem. We have a times six factorial equals b squared, where a and b are integers, and we're gonna be solving for a and b values. Now, when you see a problem like this, you are probably thinking about the prime factorization, aren't you? So the first thing we're gonna do is look at the prime factorization of six factorial, and notice that on the right hand side we have a we have a perfect square. So six factorial is 720. You can either write it like that, or you can just write it as six times five times four times three times two times one, and then break it down that way. But 720, I want to take out all the perfect squares from it. So nine is obviously a perfect square, and then nine times 80. And then 80 can be broken down into 16 and 5, which is basically the largest perfect square that 80 contains. And now here's what we have. So 6 factorial is basically 144 times 5, or I can write it as 12 squared times 5. This is not prime factorization, obviously. If you were doing the prime factorization for 6 factorial, then you would write something like 2 squared times 3, to the second power which is 12 squared times 5 and that would give you 2 to the fourth 3 to the second and 5 to the first you could also handle it that way but i like to do it this way because we kind of put the squares together but obviously this is the more number theoretic way to do it so here we notice that this is a perfect square and this is a perfect square now we want to go ahead and multiply this number by a which is an integer and we still want the result to be a perfect square. Well, as is, 6 factorial isn't a perfect square, but we can easily make it a perfect square. For example, if you just multiply it by 5, then you'll have 5 squared and it'll be a perfect square. But that's not the only number, right? So, here we go. We have 8 times 6 factorial equals 8 times 12 squared times 5. Awesome. And we want this to be b squared, a perfect square. Great. Now, since 12 squared is already a perfect square, I don't really have to worry about it. What I need to worry about is a times five. How can I make that a perfect square? So this problem kind of reduces to finding something like this. The reason why I pick a different variable is because five times a is not b squared, right? It is another perfect square. So in this case, we're gonna look for something that'll multiply by five to make a perfect square. Obviously five is the smallest, but if I just multiply five by any perfect square, then this product will also be a perfect square because it'll be five squared times d squared. In other words, a needs to be five times a perfect square. That way when you multiply by five, it'll be a perfect square and the other perfect square will just make it more perfect, right? So a needs to be something like that. So let's go ahead and rewrite it. Five times a needs to be a perfect square, which is like c squared. So a needs to be five times d squared. So from here we get a equals five d squared, where d is a positive integer, right? Great. So now can d be zero? That's a good question. If d is zero, then a is gonna be zero, and then c is gonna be zero. And I don't think you want that to happen because if a is zero, then b is zero. Well, that might work for integers, I guess. So zero, zero would definitely be one of the solutions. But if you're looking for non-zero solutions, then you're probably looking for something else. Okay, so what is that supposed to mean? a equals 5d squared, right? Well, we can kind of write it this way. We can plug this into our equation. a times 6 factorial equals b squared. And I want a to be 5 times d squared. Now, what is 6 factorial, right? That's going to be 720. So you can kind of write it like that. And then this is equal to b squared. When you multiply this, you get 3600 times d squared equals b squared. And from here, b just becomes 60d if you square root both sides. In other words, if you write a as 5d squared, b becomes 60d, 60 times d. And we basically parameterize the a and b values. So in other words, we can kind of think about the solutions as ordered pairs such as 5d squared comma 60d, where d 
d is a positive integer again if you want to add zero to this you can but you're just going to get zero comma zero which is not very interesting right and this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.